Hey, Alex. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Chris. How you doing? I'm great. I'm great. So we were just talking before this. You see the you see the comic books and you you check out comicbook.com, huh? Yes. Yes. I watch or read two sites. I won't mention the other one, but yeah, I'm a big fan. Big, big, <laughs> big fan. I we'll, appreciate we'll, keep, we'll keep the branding just to you. That's very nice of you. I appreciate that. You know, I'm going to try to do as much as I can for the movie, The Infernal Machine. And do you know, do you know what's funny is what's that? it must be some sort of synergy because you got Return of the Jedi and I've got <gasps> Emperor Strikes Back. You know, it's weirdly enough, I love those two movies back to back and I feel like you can't have one without the other, but most people prefer The Empire Strikes Back and I don't know why, but I love I love Return of the Jedi. I like it slightly more than Empire. I think just because it's a happy ending. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, no, I mean, no, no more said. Ba- barely though. I watched it as like a kid, and so I think my you know as a kid I was like, oh, I'm just happy that Luke won, you know. So that was a good spot for it to be in. Yeah. Uh so you know about the Infernal Machine, I was going to tell you. I mean, great job by the way. I I really enjoyed the movie. I went into it completely blind, and I saw zero trailers for it, which I'm really enjoying watching movies like that now, just yeah. knowing the absolute bare minimum. And I honestly expected Dwight to be played by Jeremy. But then, it, yeah, but then, I mean, just as I was watching the movie, that's the character that I thought they were setting up for. And yeah. then it was you. And I noticed like your hair and your beard, your mannerisms, I thought sort of resembled Jeremy. So I wanted to know, like, was that misdirect intentional or was that me just not knowing anything about the movie because I didn't watch any trailers? You mean that my performance is a little bit similar to Jeremy's or? Yeah, on, like a little similar to Jeremy as a person, I felt like in some way. But then again, maybe okay. it was just because the, the sort of characters that he plays versus the characters that you play. I just it just caught me off guard. I really wasn't expecting Dwight that's to be. A, that's, a, that's such an interesting take. I think maybe because uh, the mannerisms behind Dwight, because he's so restrained in the environment that he's in and then. Uh, with Jeremy playing, I don't know how much I can give away, a certain yeah, character yeah. that has had some events that are making him feel very restrained as well. Um, maybe those tie into that thought process. But no, I, I never met Jeremy. Um, I actually filmed before him. Uh, I filmed for a couple of days and then, and then, I, and then I left. Um, and my scenes are only with, um, are only with Guy, so. Yeah. Which uh, they they were incredible. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But I did want to bring up that like Dwight is he's a that's a very heavy character to play when you really you know break down what he's yeah. done. Uh, mm-hmm. Very different than the kinds of roles that I feel like we've seen you in before. Were there any real life people or fictional characters that sort of influenced your performance? Uh, I mean the the obvious is to go on YouTube and kind of somewhat try and understand the psychology behind these uh, very strange events and um, I won't even call them human, but people that do these horrific acts. Mm -hmm. Um, But I can only watch about 10 minutes of that because it it really um, doesn't uh, sit very well with me. Um, So I was very fortunate enough to have the character on the page um, that Andrew Hunt, the director wrote um and yeah i kind of went off that also i have the best scene partner ever i have guy who by the way kind of creates this safe space and has this uh way of kind of guiding you through a scene um and elevating you um so yeah uh based on loosely based on anyone not really i just kind of the only thing I took was the the voice is a little obviously I have a lower voice than than Dwight the voice and the way that the intonation of how he speaks I thought um, is something that I wanted to interject. It was kind of strange for me because obviously I'm doing an American accent. I've done many different American accents in films that I've done. I've never changed the tone of my voice, mm-hmm. um, and I kind of was a little nervous to see how that would be respond, like uh, uh, received, sorry. Um, but Guy and Andrew both thought it was a good choice and I went with that. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I, I really liked it. I mean, it really, like I said, going in blind, not knowing anything about what, cause I, I just, I really like, if I, I cover so many things for comic book that I, it's like, I always have to watch the latest trailers that come out as far as like Marvel and DC and stuff. And yeah. I've personally got a little burnout on doing that. And I just like, so when there's a movie that I'm like, Oh, I don't have to watch a trailer for this. I can just watch it. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, so that really threw me. I'm totally. trying I'm trying everything in my power not to talk about comic book movies or the website or things that you're covering. Bro, like we, I mean, or, or the new series. And we can like talk Hulk. about, if you want to, we can definitely say I, I feel over like that. Paramount might not be too happy when I'm not promoting <laughs> Infernal Machine, but yeah. yeah. Well, you know, let's see if we can we can work it in some way. Uh, you know, there's this really cool scene between you and Guy that was built up, felt inspired by some of the great interrogation scenes. Like, you know, when I watched you and Guy sort of go head to head, it sort of reminded me almost like the Dark Knight, you know, like the Heath Ledger Batman scene a little bit. You know what I mean? It's just you've got these two forces kind of coming together. And yeah. So when a film builds a character like Dwight up like that and the audience doesn't actually meet him until halfway through the film, you know, does that make your performance easier or more daunting? For me, I only focus on what my role in the film is uh, as far as the character that I'm playing. Um, and as a whole, as a movie lover, I obviously love the anticipation in a psychological thriller of trying to figure out or who is this character and how are they going to present themselves? Because I've seen films that do that and then the character turns up and I feel disappointed. One of the great... Um, reveals for me in in it wasn't actually in a film it was in a tv show was um moriarty in sherlock holmes um uh when he showed up the actor that plays him i've gone completely mind blank he's a genius actor i i know i know who you're talking about too are you talking about and you're talking about the series right the, about the, the show. series yes yeah, he, he was uh back. he was in an episode of black mirror that i also really loved i He's a ge he's a genius yeah. actor. He's also uh, uh, in the new TV show Talent of Mr. Ripley. Um, but anyway, he turned up and wow, expectations are blown out of proportion. Like you're just so enamored by what this guy's portrayal is. So yes, I obviously subconsciously probably feel a little bit of pressure um, with a movie that is talking about a character continuously for like, 45 or 50 minutes of a movie but when you get there you're not really thinking of that you're just thinking about the performance sure. and you, yeah and what you need to do also I kind of was a little starstruck to be honest <laughs> like yeah. I grew up admiring guys films and yeah. here you have a man who's so humble so approachable uh, kind of completely unaware of who he is and like loves talking about film um, yeah. Uh, so yeah those distractions were um, taking my mind off of your question. I have, I've had a couple of conversations with a guy at this point and I just love him. I mean, he's yeah. just the coolest dude. I, I mean, yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. As a gentleman. Yeah. He's, he's fantastic. So speaking of, if you want to talk a little bit about some comic book stuff, what, what what's your, what's your favorite uh, Marvel, like Disney plus show, star Wars, Disney plus show so far. Uh, for me, I think the OG and the original is Mandalorian. I think that the way that they started um, this expedition into this kind of bridged gap between the films and these kind of origin stories is fantastic. Um, so I think for me in the Star Wars series, I've just started, is it Andor? Yeah, it's Andor. That's I, I've just started and it feels like it's a much bigger world now than when you first watch uh, Mandalorian. But then I just saw the trailer for Mandalorian season three and I'm like, okay, wow. All right. We're, 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 we're about to go places. Um, and the way that they introduce, I mean, obviously hopefully people who watch this don't get spoilers, but the way that they introduce a very influential character um, on the last season of. Oh Mandalorian. God. So good. It was so good. Yeah, it's I, like, wow. Yeah. For, I mean, for me, like Mandalorian was literally the, uh, I mean, the thing that made me love Star Wars again, because I really wasn't a big fan of the prequels. And then the, I feel like the sequel trilogy sort of let me down a little bit. But can I ask you, 
yeah, I talk to this about uh, I talk about this subject with my friends and and people that work inside my company who are huge advocates for the the new TV shows and they love them and they say the same thing to to to, to me or the discussions we have around the table of like didn't really enjoy the prequels didn't really enjoy the 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 last three series or whatever and I say why and they give me an answer. And I would love to know why you, who works for this incredible site, why you as a movie lover didn't enjoy those movies. Um, for, for me, the prequels were a, a little too political, I guess. And I, I didn't find them to, they just didn't have the same sort of like uh, imagination that I felt like the original trilogy had. Uh, yeah. I think that like the original trilogy, you know, you know, obviously George Lucas gets all the credit, but but he didn't direct two and three. And and I think that uh, or I, I guess it's, you know, five and six, but he didn't direct those. And I think that that was like sometimes people need to be pulled just a little back. And then George Lucas had complete control of the prequels. And so I just think he got a little bit too in the weeds for me personally. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's cool moments in there. I just don't love them the same way that I, I mean, I love empire strikes back and return of the jedi yeah and then for the sequel trilogy i really liked force awakens as far as i thought they set like some really good stuff up with it but then yeah. then the last two just sort of uh for me just sort of dropped the ball it was not you know what i envisioned luke skywalker to be like at that grizzled age and and you know and i mean they're they're okay they're fine but they're just not my favorite you know do you, do you want do you want to know the answer of why and this is not my answer but the answer from a lot of people from my generation who did like the series of Ewan McGregor and kind of have a nostalgia um uh towards uh Obi-Wan Kenobi and 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 that kind of prequel series is they say that the fight scenes and the lightsaber scenes in those are, and is it return of the sith where it's darth maul revenge of the sith no he's in phantom menace phantom menace that's it yeah. phantom, yeah. phantom menace um that scene where they're fighting and it's liam neeson and and um and ewan mcgregor yeah is i i remember asking my mom for Christmas, can I have a lightsaber? And I would go out and like reenact that. And that is a very nostalgic uh, movie for me as a young boy. As a man who loves film, obviously I love the original series. I still have like a strange love for the prequels, but as an older man that sees film a little differently now, I mm -hmm. see how the narratives of those movies are kind of um, a little off Yeah. Like, off kilter yeah same, yeah same sort of thing i mean that that lightsaber fight in phantom menace is incredible but it's just the the hour and 20 minutes that it takes to get to it yeah what, so slow and i also think there's like a mystique to darth vader that i really loved in the originals right yeah. and it's like it's like mike myers or freddy krueger or classic yeah. villains that i just feel like i don't need to know how they became the way they are i mean you can yeah. give me just a little bit and then, and that's all, I mean, your character is a great example of somebody that like, you really don't know a yeah. lot about him other than he read a book and a, a, a flip switch. Yeah. And, and I think sometimes not knowing is scarier. So I think that's, you know, that's why. I just feel like they could have capitalized so well in Darth Maul, mm -hmm. but they chose to be more Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no they i mean that's a great reasoning why as well and, and and then and then the the latest three i just i think they were beautifully shot and cast so well and the expansion of the universe kind of was like a bridge gap to these new series but i just want i just want the i, I need or i needed the um the lightsaber scenes to be like a little bit more dynamic yeah yeah, I can respect that. I, I, you know, I could talk Star Wars all day long with you. I, I, I know you, you've got a, a lot more interviews to do. I, yeah. I just got one last question. I feel like I would be doing a disservice to ladies everywhere if I don't ask this. You know, they sure. announced Magic Mike's Last Dance a few months back. And I think a lot of people want to know what Adam's been up to the last 10 years. So is there any chance he'll pop up? He will definitely not be popping up. I only have done one movie in a thong and I hope to keep it like that. Um, but still a very big fan of, of the of the franchise. I think uh, I think Soderbergh, who obviously oversees everything, has done 
um a great job and uh yeah yeah alex this was a really uh, this is a pleasure for me man i love talking to you and it, yeah. it excited me more to know that you're a fellow nerd so uh yeah. this is great I, I can't wait to talk to you again man I can't, I can't really i can't really hide it <laughs> No, no, I, you know, you, I didn't even notice. I just thought that was a really nice painting behind you. <laughs> and until you pointed it out, I was like, oh, shit, that is Empire Strikes Back. But uh, yes, absolute pleasure, dude. Thank you so much. And congratulations on the movie. So thank you, my friend. I'll speak to you soon.